Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of ICC Ghana and the International Trade Center, we will take this opportunity to welcome you to our webinar on how to navigate uh, for export opportunities on the Global Trade Help Desk. The ICC is privileged to be working with the International Trade Center on this particular project. As you know, we are the voice of business globally, and um, we have been organizing training programs for those in the trade sector, especially in the banking sector, those involved in trade facilitation. And today, we climax in most of our training programs that we've been doing face-to-face -face with this webinar that will take us through the product that ITC has which will help you in your work as a trade finance expert, as an exporter, an export manager, um, as an academician, you know, we all tend to gain. So that once we have this on our laptops on a daily basis while searching for information, we can navigate this easily. I have with me here the program manager, um, at the Trade and Market Intelligence Section Department of the International Trade Center, Anna Jankowski. I hope I got it, Jankowska. Jankowska. She's also the project director for the Global Help Desk. And then she will be handling today's presentation together with uh, her assistant uh, program officer, Adelia Rashidova, who's been working closely with me. So I wouldn't take much of your time. I will let us kickstart the presentations immediately. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Manuel, for your kind words. And we are honored to be to have this opportunity um, to uh, present the Global Trade Help Desk to you. Um, my name is Anna Jankowska. I'm a trade economist by training, and my goal today is to help. Uh, is today is to introduce you to a tool that I hope will simplify market research for you and help you find the data that you need to identify and compare new business opportunities um, in new markets. Um, I work closely with Adelia, and Adelia will be taking us actually through the demo of the tool. I will just give you a quick background information, and then she will show you um, how the tool works in practice, and she will also take you through a quick exercise. Um, Everyone will receive the recording of this and also the materials, so there's no need to take notes. And if you have any questions along the way, please feel free to use the chat. We are very much open to answering all questions, and we will also share our contact information at the end um, of this webinar. So if you will allow me, I will just quickly share my screen um, and take you through a quick presentation. So I hope you can now see my screen. Um, as uh, Mr. Manuel mentioned, um, we work at the International Trade Center. Um, in case you haven't heard of us, um, it's a joint agency of the United Nations of UNCTAD and the WTO, the World Trade Organization. And what we do is we work really on uh, working with small businesses to um, to drive trade-led growth and to help improve lives through sustainable trade. We try to make trade an inclusive engine of growth to make sure that we build prosperous communities around the globe. And this is specifically the mission of ITC is to work with small businesses in a number of ways. One is to provide information to help you make informed business decisions, to help you um, take good risks or good decisions on where to expand your business and to be able to grow and create new jobs. And we believe that this is especially important because small businesses are the absolute foundation of the both the economy of Ghana, the economy of Switzerland, where we live, but really around the globe. And when we work to make to empower small businesses to help them grow, not only do they get higher wages, but it creates more jobs, more growth, and more prosperity for everyone. So this is why we work uh, at the International Trade Center specifically on trying to help more small businesses uh, 
expand their businesses in new markets and find new opportunities. ITC does this in a number of ways. Adelia and I work in the trade and market intelligence section, so we will introduce you to a few tools. But there are other also activities you may have heard of. Um, ITC also has she trades hubs, work with specific sectors. We also work with governments helping them join the World Trade Organization, among other things. So you may hear of ITC in many other contexts as well. Now, as far as um, what we do here in the trade and market intelligence section, um, in case you've ever used ITC tools before, the most popular one that we have is ITC Trade Map, which has been around for about 20 years. It's one of the largest statistical databases in the world on trade, and it can help you find information on trade flows. We also have market access map, which can help you find tariffs and regulations. We have export potential map, um, which is um, a forward-looking uh, model that can help us think about opportunities in the future and the years to come. We have information on rules of origin, on procurement opportunities, investment, among other things. So. ITC has been working for many years to collect this very important data and to make it available through a number of tools. And um, it's we've gotten a, a good deal of impact. We have really a lot of the large companies are using our data. We have government agencies and journalists that are quoting um, the information that we provide. And we have several million users worldwide now. Um, and this is, of course, free to access from Ghana and from um, all developing countries as well as EU countries. And you can do so um, through the market analysis portal where you can just register. But what we're going to do today doesn't require any login, doesn't require um, this sort of, um, we're not going to look at these tools. What we're going to do is look at something a little bit different. We're going to look at something called the Global Trade Help Desk. Now, Global Trade Help Desk was founded uh, a few years ago. It was launched in 2020. And the idea is that sometimes with so many different tools and so many different sources of information, as a small business, it can become overwhelming and, and difficult to know which information you should trust, uh, where to find the specific information, how to interpret the information, and how to really come up with a in, informed and reliable um, business strategy on new markets um, with information that's really coming from everywhere. So the idea is that international agencies, including the ITC, have come together to try to simplify this process. And so in 2020, actually, when the start of the COVID pandemic, when everybody was trying to figure out um, where could they be diversifying to which markets, what could be going on, the Global Trade Help Desk was launched. And this is actually in partnership with 10 different agencies. And the idea is to create a single entry point so that it's easier to find the key trade and market information that you need to be able to inform your business decisions. Now, what do we mean? And through the Global Trade Help Desk, we're going to take you through a very specific process. We're going to first to help you think about how economically attractive is your market. So we're going to look at previous imports and previous demand. And we're also going to compare this with export potential, which are projections into the future about how much we think could be imported of your product in a specific market. Next, we're going to think about how much is it going to cost your business to actually enter this market. We're going to think about tariffs. Uh, how much does it cost in terms of import tariffs? Are there, are there preferential tariffs? Are there rules of origin that are associated with this? Um, but more importantly, what are the actual regulations? So what are the packaging requirements? What are the um, import licensing requirements? What are the different types of regulations that you need to comply with to effectively reach this market? We're also going to help you look and consider um, if you want to trade in organic or fair trade or specific um, privately certified products, what are some of the options for doing this? And the newest section that we're really quite proud of is about accessing digital opportunities. So 
Right now, as you know, especially after the COVID pandemic, we do much more of our shopping online rather than going to physical stores. So if you're looking to um, move your business online and sell online, what are some of the marketplaces you can consider? What are some of the costs associated with this? What are the payment solutions and helping you think through some of these um, decisions? And then last but not least, thinking about potential partners. So we have information about um, the IP offices that uh, you might consider if you'd like to protect your brand name. We have um, local institutions that can help you develop your export plan. We have trade finance providers. We have links to the business community in your target market. So a few different areas where you might consider connecting with different types of partners. So just to give you once again, a little bit of a, of a highlight of the information. So when we're talking about economic attractiveness, the type of information we're gonna think about is how big is this market? Is it one of the larger global markets? How is the evolution of demand in this market? Is demand growing rapidly? Um, and once again, what is the export potential or looking forward, does this also look like it's going to be a very promising and growing market in the future? What are some of the things that we could expect? Um, so what do we mean by export potential? Like how is it that we could possibly um, estimate or calculate where we could consider exporting in, uh, in markets in the coming years? So what are some of the factors we might consider? I think one of the, obviously the main factors is is this a market that has exported, uh, imported a lot in the past? Is this something, a market that's really growing quickly and uh, with strong economic growth performance? What is the distance to, uh, to Ghana? Um, especially for fresh produce, this could be a really relevant factor. Um, what are the tariffs that are applied? Do we have a um, an advantage over other suppliers of this product in terms of the costs that we would face? And also, what is the strength of the trade relationship? So this is something that we calculate and that we also take into account in this estimation that looks only at quantitative factors. So we're not looking at regulations here, we're not looking at other things, but we're looking at all of the different quantitative factors that might influence this estimation. Um, so once again, we take all of these different, um, different factors and we do, um, an econometric estimation five years into the future. So now we're looking at estimations by 2028, and it gives us kind of a ranking of the markets and of the products that are especially um, promising from Ghana. So we will look at this information very carefully within the Global Trade Help Desk. Um, so once again, the platform here brings together information from ITC, but not just ITC. We're looking at information from ITC tools like Trade Map, Market Access Map, Rules of Origin Facilitator. But we're also looking at information from the World Bank, from the World Trade Organization, from UNCTAD, um, from all of these different institutions. And the idea is that through a single search, you will have access to all of these different um, pieces of information all at the same time. Now, um, after this brief intro, I would like to pass the floor to my colleague Adelia, who um, can take us through a bit of an example and can show us how does this work in practice? Because I think uh, it's always more interesting to see um, how it looks. And uh, if you could, Adelia, please take us through a, a demo and then maybe we, uh, we take a stop there and see if people have any questions. Uh, yes, absolutely. Thank you, Anya, for the introduction to the ITC, to the Global Trade Help Desk, and uh, to the information that we have on our portal. And of course, we all cannot wait to see how it actually works in practice. So can you please tell me, Anya, if my screen is sharing well? We can see it, Adelia, quite well. Thank you. Perfect. Um, so... This is the Global Trade Help Desk. Uh, it's available via www.globaltradehelpdesk as one word, .org. Um, it is available in English, French, Spanish, Portuguese, Russian, uh, Arabic, and now in Bahasa. And we're exploring translating it into more uh, languages um, at the moment. Uh, 
Uh, on the top of the page, you can read more about the initiative at your own convenience, about our partners, tools, the modules, um, browse our resources if you wish. And there is a login button, but as Anya said, the access to the tool is absolutely free. Um, all information is easily available. Um, the only information that you might um, uh, be able to see using a login is some uh, business contact information via trade map, but we will get there uh, later on. And so from the very get go, you can uh, start exploring your opportunities. Um, if you wish to scroll further, uh, we can read a little bit more about our user experiences and testimonials. And we will soon add some quick navigational guide videos to help you guide through the process of market analysis. So without further ado, let's start exploring our opportunities. Here you can already see I've input Ghana as my country. Uh, you can select any country as you wish, of course. Um, for this example, we're going to look at cocoa paste. So you can either type in the six digit HS code, uh, if you know it for your product, or you can use a keyword search. For example, if I put in cocoa paste, it will give me the results um, the, the five closest results to my query. So uh, I'm selecting this one, cocoa paste, whether or not defatted, not defatted, uh, with the code 180310. And to select the market, I can type in any market that I'm interested in, or I can also use the um, find uh, help me find markets tool uh, that is taking the information from our expert potential map that estimates the expert potential for the selected product. So for this uh, cocoa paste, not defatted cocoa paste from Ghana, what are the countries with the biggest expert potential? So here it shows us top 10. And the biggest one here is the Netherlands, followed by France, Russian Federation, and more. So let's focus on the biggest market for the moment. And then I click on Go. And it... Uh, puts us on the market overview page, the bird's eye view of all the opportunities, conditions of partners in our selected market. So from the get-go, you can see how attractive is the Netherlands market overall. And you can see that here, it ranks number one in the world's top importers of the cocoa paste. And in total from the whole world, it exports uh, for 351.2 million worth of US dollars of this cocoa paste uh, yearly. So in the last year, it imported this much. And below, you can see the market perspective specifically for Ghana. So uh, on the very left, you can see the import share is 27%. So uh, currently, 27% of imports of this cocoa paste by the Netherlands uh, is uh, already occupied by Ghana, by Ghanaian exports of this product. And here you see the import growth in the past five years. So we see that it has been positive, even though um, small. Um, and th that this product has uh, still a great amount of expert potential, the estimated benchmark value of the expert potential uh, for Ghana by 228. So we calculate, we estimate that Ghana can export uh, around 109 million worth of US dollars of cocoa paste to the Netherlands every year subsequently up to 228 if all the conditions uh, that we have taken into the calculations are, are um, perfect. Uh, here you can see the uh, import evolution from, 200, uh, from 2014 up to 2023. And uh, you can find out more on the trade map. So the information here, we always cite our sources so you can explore it at your own convenience later. Um, what we want to know, of course, next is what is the cost to enter the market? And here you can see that it varies from zero to 9.6 and that we might be eligible for a preferential tariff. So we can click here and find out more about it. And here we see that there is an MFN duties applied to all WTO members of 9.6%. Uh, however, there is a preferential tariff for Ghana of 0%. Um, the EPA, ECOWAS and Mauritania EU trade agreement. And we can read more about it uh, right here. 
Um, so in order to qualify for that preferential agreement, you have to comply with the rules of origin and you can read more about the criterion used here. For example, here is a change in chapter heading and uh, um, uh, regional quantity percentage, I believe, original value content of 60%. And you can read more about it and consult the documents also. Um, this information is coming from our other tool called the Rules of Origin Facilitator. Now, if we go back uh, on top of sometimes high tariffs in case we're not able to comply, for example, with the uh, Rules of Origin um, requirements, of course, there are other mandatory requirements that are sometimes much more uh, hard to meet than just a high tariff. So we see here that Ghana uh, itself applies seven domestic uh, measures to the exported cocoa paste. And in the Netherlands, there is four measures regarding market conditions, 12 regarding shipment and inspection, and 40 notified regulations. So let's click through each of them. Um, so here for the domestic measures, you can see that there are measures on certification, uh, on inspection, testing, and more. And you, you can read more about it. Um, you can also see if there are any quantitative restrictions applied. At the moment, there are none. Uh, so that information on the quantitative restrictions comes from the WTO. Um, on the measures requirements it uh, for the domestic market, it's either us, uh, ITC, or UNCTAD that collects the data. And for the product requirements for the EU, it comes from the Access to Markets database. So here you can read more again about the, all the requirements and conditions and uh, uh, about the noti notified regulatory changes. So because it is um, a cumbersome process to collect the data regarding uh, restrictions and notifications, uh, the WTO put in place the EPING notification system that will notify you about any changes regarding SPS, so sanitary and phytosanitary measures, and the TBTs or technical measures to trade related to the previously identified measures. So here you can see that there were, has been just the recent one um, in on the 15th of February. So you can read more about it if you like. So we can either click through and go back or just navigate it through these tabs. I prefer to scroll through like the main page. So uh, in case you would like to target some niche markets, uh, you might want to also check the sustainability standards that might be applicable for your product. So you can click on find out more and you can read about all these um, private standards for environmental protection, worker rights uh, and more. So you might want to consult these. Um, and this comes from our other map, which is sustainability map. And as Anya has been mentioning, we have a new section on our website uh, dedicated to e-commerce in case you would like to sell online, if, if you have your own platform or you would like to explore um, other available online marketplaces. You can see here that the digital payment coverage for this uh, is 90% and there is a tariff we threshold um, and many marketplaces that have been identified. So um, in our Go Digital section, here you can see information on the low value shipments. So uh, shipments not subject, uh, not subject to tariffs and taxes. So uh, that go below the de minimis value of here 150 euros would not be taxed uh, in case they are sold online. Here you can see rough equivalence and uh, this comes from the Global Express Association. Um, in case you uh, want to go explore online marketplaces, we can have information on those as well. So these are the local marketplaces in the Netherlands. And you can read more about uh, the marketplace itself, the number of visitors, and whether or not they're open to foreign sellers. For example, here we have Zalando, that is also active in, in Switzerland, for example. AliExpress and more. And here you can see that these are actually open to foreign sellers. And in case you have already your own website, you can explore the online payment solution uh, providers, for example, PayPal, Gcash, Paysera, and more. You can read, uh, you can 
uh, check how many active merchants there are each, read about pros and cons and the fees that they that they have and more. So, and uh, last but not the least, we have our partners. So we want to put our plan into the action and we need to connect with the rele relevant partners, not only the businesses, but also perhaps the trade finance providers if we're interested in those. Uh, we have information on trade promotion organization and on intellectual property offices in case you have uh, a product that you would like to certify with uh, with that. So if you click on one, you can see here in our last identify partner step. So, um, so let's start with the IP offices. So we have identified these two. So these are local offices in Ghana. Um, we have information on trade part, uh, finance providers as well, trade promotion organizations, and uh, for some countries, and it's currently uh, we're currently working on expanding the database. We have information on freight forwarders, which is provided by IATA. So for the last part, uh, but not the least, of course, the business directory, we have identified about five thousand uh, potential partners through Trade Map. So um, this is the our oldest tool, as Anne has explained, um, and this is the only time when you might require an access to have a login, but it is free for the countries that we work in. It is free for developing countries, so you should have uh, not problems accessing this information. So here you see I'm already logged in, so if when I clicked on it, it teleported me to trade map. But the registration is very simple. You can do it through a trade map or uh, through the GTH, through the login button. It will um, put you through the registration page. It's very simple. You just need your email, your your name, and uh, it's it's free for um, it's free after that. So here on trade map, we see the following information. So we see the importing companies in the Netherlands broken down by product categories for the following products. So for the cocoa paste, not, um, so uh, for example, here in groceries, we have the most businesses listed. So let's click on those and explore what we have there. So here is the, the list of potential importers that uh, are interested in the cocoa paste. So for example, the first one, so this is more um, of an indicative information because with the changing times, many businesses go, um, many businesses might change, might change their credentials, might even go out of business. So this is an indicative rather, it gives you a business uh, names, sometimes it gives the a website as well. And um, you can read more about the, the product categories that they deal with. And uh, this information on trade map in this companies uh, section is sourced from two databases. So Dun & Bradstreet and Compass. And these are commercial databases that we obtain the data from. So all the businesses listed there um, they are self-reported. So at the time when they have registered, they have that have been verified. However, there are no frequent checks um, if the businesses are still operating with the same product categories, if they have still this, still the same contact information, phone number, email, and the director is still the same person. So this is rather for you to to check, like like a little homework exercise. So take it with a with a grain of salt, but it gives us already a good indication. So here it is. Uh, There's a lot of them. Uh, so it's just an indication of where you could potentially, who you could potentially contact. I think uh, that is it. And in case you are not convinced with the Netherlands uh, as a target market, right at the end of the page, if you're scrolling and scrolling through, you can select any other market with a single click, for example, France. 
And you can do the same thing here at the top of the page as well. If you click on edit, you can change your exporter, your product or your target market at any time. And then now we will we are seeing, for example, the results for the French market. So So that is it, I believe, for the demo part. And uh, Anya, could you please let me know if there has been any questions in the chat maybe before we proceed? I don't see any questions in the chat. Um, if you have any questions, please, uh, please let us know. But so far, I don't see anything uh, coming up in the chat. Everything Great. looks good so far, David tells us. So, oh, Perfect. I see Emmanuel has his hand. Emmanuel, would you like to ask a question or make a comment? Um, I would like to ask us to try another product, um, Shea Butter. Shea Butter, okay. Um, so it is not the same butter. Um, do you want to go to, um, would you want to do maybe an advanced search and trade map, like just to show how, if we're not sure about a product code, we, uh, we yes. figure this out. <laughs> it is. All right. So this is now we're doing some advanced, uh, search techniques. So as Anya mentioned, uh, on trade map, we have this tool called advanced search currently only implemented on trade map, but we are really working with our teams to make it available in other platforms or all through one click of a button. So when you go to trademap.org, the platform that allows you to see information on trade statistics worldwide. And once you are, uh, actually it doesn't even require a login to do the advanced search that I figured recently. But if you're logged in, you will see your name up here. Uh, you click on advanced search. And uh, if you click here at, at tariff line level, it will show you codes across all the countries in English based on your, um, it, it kind of work like, works like Google based on the keyword, um, for example. So if I'm not mis misspelling the word, but okay. So she, she butter, uh, it shows me results for both words because I inputted two. And here you can see approximately the results um of my search so the first so here it depends in canada for example here we have shea butter jojoba cashew nut oil so this seems like an oil um all these codes here they are related to nuts um shea cake in nigeria nuts 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 um and here i believe this code uh, from Suriname and Belize, they are actually identical. Um, the, the code at the six digit level usually should give me the code for the she she butter. As here we can see butter. I think it's actually the other code, Adelia. I think it's Maybe the one that butter. for the oil, I think it's the 151590, uh, like the one that comes up first yeah. and is also listed as an oil. Because I think the one lower down is an actual like butter made from milk, not from shea. Um, uh, correct, you're correct. So you have to pay attention that you see your product specifically because finding a right HS code could be very problematic and that will just halt all your further search process. So um, let us try with this code. So um, 15, 15, 15, 9, 15, 15, 90. Okay, let's try with 15, 15, 90. All right, so we have United States of America as the top product for the expert potential of this. Uh, they're number one importer of this product. Currently, um, Ghana takes only 1% of their imports, but they they import almost half a billion, over half, over half a billion worth of uh, this product uh, per year. 
you see that there is still a really good export potential, almost 14 million uh, US dollars. In the past, overall, over the five years, there has been an import growth, has been declining a little bit, but still the exports are quite significant, almost 3 million US dollars last year. You have also a preferential tariff, but be careful with this one because for some products, it depends on um, what products you're selecting because tariffs are usually um, um, depending on the national tariff line of the product. And that depends on the importer, how the importer classifies the product. For example, jojoba oil, let's imagine we have jojoba oil to export. And here we have three different um, tariffs that could apply and we have uh, different preferential arrangements as well. So the MFN duties is 2.3. We have a preferential tariff for GSP countries applicable. And there is also a preferen preferential tariff for AGOA countries here. And uh, yeah, for another, for another product code, fixed vegetable fats and oils and a fraction of soy, whether or not, whether or not refined, um, it's another it's another um, MFN tariff, but there is still a GSP preference, so uh, you should be usually good under whichever there is. I think in that case, it would probably be the nut oil since they're Shea nuts. So I think you should yeah, be good with yeah, that one. It should be the nut oil uh, overall. Here, and so you have your, again, your product uh, requirements, um, your sustainability markets, still a good payment coverage in case you're selling online. And a little less, but still a good amount of businesses and uh, other organizations you could reach out to. And uh, Japan uh, would be our next uh, most interesting market uh, after the USA in terms of estimated export potential. And you could read more about it also uh, here. Here you see it has been slightly growing in the past. That is it. Uh, I hope it has been rather clear. And now in order for me to test that, uh, I will actually do a quick little exercise with you. Let me just switch sharing my screen so I know that I'm showing you the correct one. One second. Okay. So, great. So now I will ask you to please uh, use your uh, browsers, your computers, or uh, you can use your mobile phone to uh, go through the Mentimeter. So we have our little Mentimeter exercise now. So please use your mobile phone and scan the QR code that you see on the screen, or you can use your browser if you're watching us on the computer or tablet and go to menti.com and enter the meeting room code, which is 18134578. And once you're there, please leave me a thumbs up so I know that you're with us. The screen will say instructions. So if you see instructions, you are at the right place. So again, use your mobile phones, scan the QR code. And once you're in, uh, it will say either you are all set or instructions. And uh, you can leave me a thumbs up. So I know that you're joined us. Or you can, um, without uh, leaving our webinar, go to your browser and go to menti.com and input 18 13 45 78 for the meeting room code. And then you will join us from there. All right, we have seven people joining. I'll let you join later on at your convenience. You will see the QR code for the meeting room all the time on the left of the screen. So in case the technology is not cooperating yet, you will be able to join us in a little while. So let's start. Uh, well, another thing you need to do is, uh, while the others are still joining, scanning the QR code on the left, um, you can go to globaltradehelpdesk.org, and uh, that will help you actually to answer the questions that we will have. There's just three questions, and they're very painless and uh, very 
fast to answer. So we will be looking at an example of exporting cashew nuts in shell uh, from Ghana. So you can either type in cashew nuts and then select the one that says in shell um, or just type in the product code 0810131. Uh, okay, so question number one. When exporting cashew nuts in shell from Ghana, which market has the biggest export potential according to ITC estimations? Is it India, is it Vietnam, or is it Dominican Republic? So you go to globaltradehubdesk.org and uh, you put Ghana as exporter, you put uh, cashew nuts or 080131 in the product code. And then in order to see the market with the biggest estimated export potential, you can click uh, on the importing country and then on explore markets tab to find the top 10 markets with the biggest export potential. Okay. So we have six for India and one for Vietnam, and zero for Dominican Republic. And you guys are correct. The majority of you, at least it is India indeed. Uh, question number uh, two, what is the estimated export potential of uh, exporting of this product from Ghana to this market, so to India? Is it 293.7 uh, million US dollars? Is it 662.1 uh, million US dollars? Or is it 1.89 billion US dollars? So once you have selected India as your importing market, you click on go on the green button. And then right below, you will see the estimated export potential. All right, so the majority of you are have voted uh, the second option, which is correct. Congratulations, it's 662.1 million US dollars. And last question, how many domestic measures does Ghana apply on the export of this product? So this is universal across all the markets and related to these cashew nuts in shell. Uh, so how many measures, two, six or 11? That one you can find out if you scroll down the page and you will see it in domestic measures. Okay, we have one for two, one for six, and two for 11. Mm -hmm. 11 is leading. Okay, so let's see the correct answer. Yes, you guys are correct. There is 11 domestic measures that Ghana applies on the export of this product. And that is it for the Mentimeter. Now, for those of you who didn't get the answer correctly, don't worry. Let's come uh, try it again together. So I uh, hope you still see my screen. Let me just double check. Yes. All right. So we're exporting from Ghana. We're interested in cashew in shell here we go we have our code 080131 and we want to see which market has the biggest export potential so we go here in the find markets tab and we see two main uh, competing countries here first is india 
So we click on go. So India is correct answer for the first question. It is number two in world importers and the export potential estimated by ITC uh, by 2028 of Ghanaian cashews in shell is of 662.1 million US dollars. And another answer was the amount exported in 2022. And I believe uh, the third option was the actual total imports of India of this product, almost 2 billion um, US dollars uh, last year. And the last question was, regardless of the market that you have selected, there is uh, 11 identified domestic measures that can apply on the import of the uh, cashew nuts in shell from the country to ensure the quality and, uh, yeah. Voila, I think that is it. Very well done, you guys. Really good participation. Thank you so much. And uh, I pass the floor back to Anya to continue. Um, thank you very much. And uh, now that you all have had a chance to actually try the platform, and um, are there any questions, any doubts, any hesitations that you might have? Um, just wanted to give you another chance. Uh, the questions we normally get are, for instance, does the platform include services? No, at this point, um, it's only for goods. So services is something that we want to cover in the future. But right now, the quality of the data does not yet permit um, this type of really detailed analysis um, it, across more than 200 economies, the way that um, trade information for goods does. Um, a lot of people ask, how often is the data updated? How is the data updated? And um, just wanted to share that this information, uh, the vast majority of it is linked through APIs. So every time that UNCTAD updates a regulation, every time that we get a new estimate of export potential or whatever it is, it's automatically updated in the Global Trade Help Desk. And so some information is updated um, monthly, some information is updated a couple of times a year. It really depends on the specific type of information. Um, so that's a little bit what I wanted to share with you in terms of the questions that we often get. But we hope that this tool that is something that you find useful. We hope that you tell your friends um, and, uh, and that if you have questions, um, how can one search for exporters list in Ghana? No. Uh, that's a great question, Rashid. Unfortunately, we do not have an exporters list in Ghana. We have information on potential importing companies, um, but we don't have information from your customs on the exporting cost, um, companies per se. So that is not something that is that we have access to. Um, now... Um, I think the last thing that I just wanted to quickly show you, and then I will leave you in the very capable hands of Adelia uh, for, for the final uh, segment of this webinar, um, is just that I wanted to talk to you quickly. Um, I wanted to talk to you quickly about um, the Global Trade Help Desk was recognized by um, the G20 last year as an inclusive, inclusive and veritable source of trade information for, um, uh, for small businesses. And we're going to be working um, in the coming months and years to um, give it a technological upgrade. So we're going to make the platform available in additional languages. We're working to make sure that we're going to be able to have automatically generated documents that you can download and share. Um, there's going to be a chat bot to help you um, ask any basic questions and to make the information more interactive and something that can help you really guide you throughout the market analysis process. So this is a little bit where we're going in, uh, in the months and years to come and something that um, we're actively working towards. Uh, so we hope to also be able to be even more um, interesting and supportive to firms in Ghana in the future. But um, that was really the um, information that we had prepared. So I leave really the conversation open um, and I leave Adelia and Emmanuel uh, in charge um, in terms of 
this discussion of if you have any questions, if you have any ideas on how this could be useful for your business, um, please, the, the floor is open and very much yours. And um, I will also put the email addresses for myself and for my colleague into the chat so that um, you can also contact us in the future. And as, as I've already shared, um, the recording of this webinar will also be um, will also be shared with you uh, afterwards. So um, don't worry about taking notes. Thank you, Anya. Um, yes, if you guys have any, any last questions, please feel free to type them in. And uh, also, please evaluate our session today if you have no more questions. Um, I give you a little bit of time to Let's fill in the quick survey is two or three minutes of your time tops. Uh, so please feel free to do so. And uh, yes, we will share the, the recording and the slides with you as well after. And if you have any questions further, um, you can reach out to info at globaltreadhelpdesk.org, which is our platform's overall email that we all read, or individually to Anya or myself. So please feel free if you have any questions or Emmanuel, if you have any anything uh, to add, please feel free. And uh, again, thank you once again for your great help in um, spreading the word about our webinar today and for inviting this many uh, great uh, participants that are also very quick in answering all the polls and questions and a very active audience. So this is always a pleasure to have such um, interested participants. So thank you once again. Um, Adelia, and then uh, let me take this opportunity to also thank our participants. Uh, on behalf of the International Team of Commerce, um, we want to thank you for taking uh, time of your busy schedule uh, to be with us. We hope you've all learned something today. And then uh, we at ICC Ghana will follow up with all the participants. For those who could not ask questions today, we could still pick their questions and then work on them. Thank you very much.